Well, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm down here on part of a main southern river. Beautiful ancient woodland here. There is traffic, it's going to be noisy. I don't know if this mic will pick it up, but there's obviously an area of ancient woodland. Nice walkway through here. It's a sort of, it's a sort of shame really that they built all these main roads where there's some nice woodland and a river. Bit of chalk stream river. I'm going to give it a go. I've never been here in my life before. It's taken me ages to find it. I've been driving round and around arguing with a lady on a sat nav. At the next left, turn at the next left, at the next left. And yeah, right. I've been going around in circles, disappearing up my own, uh, own tailpipe. But there we go. This is what is basically half of a main river. I guess it's split here because I know the actual main river is a lot bigger than that. Got swans, I've thrown a tiny bit of a ground bait in there. I mean, basically, I cut part of the carp here and just walked up. I'm having a look at the moment. Oh, great. The swans think I'm going to feed them. Go on, shove off. Give me a break. I've only been here five minutes. God, dear. If they belong to the Queen, how come they're not in the Queen's garden? That's what I want to know. Oh, there looks like no chance here. He's going to f these two are going to follow me all out the river. Anyway, what I've got is this, guys. Wow, it really is a nice wooden down here. Look at that. Really, really nice. I've got... Closed face reel, Avon rod, no quiver tip, small Avon float, might have to go to a stick float. Around my waist here, I've got, to show you, one of these thingies that goes around waists, like giant bum bag things. Got some floats shot and hooked in there. I want to be mobile today, I want to keep moving if I can. Hopefully I've got pestered by people, ducks, swans, dogs jumping in the water. <laughs> You've heard about that. I've got here a few maggots. My good friend Nigel sorted me out some maggots, mostly red and whites, which I always go for. I've got a bit of ground bait. Now, guys, a little tip here is just freeze all your ground bait that's left over. This is left over previously from another Stillwater trip. I've got some casters, I've got some bread. So, listen, I'm just going fishing. Wow, that's a big boom, that lorry. Anyway, if I catch anything, you guys will be the first to know. We probably didn't see that, guys, but I did actually get a perch. I'm having a nightmare with the camera. It's been extremely naughty with me. Got it in the case. I'm trying to use a head cam. Um, chucked a bit more ground bait in. I'll try and get set up again if the camera doesn't work. It's not going to be a good day, is it? Right. Weed on the hook. Tangle time. I'm trying to just throw my bait in. It's not starting off well. Here we go. I just figure this is very slightly deeper here. So I've never fished here, so I don't know. I suppose it's one of these places that would fish well in the winter when there's a, a bit of flood water that's come down, put a bit of colour in it. This is peak summer and it, we've had no rain. Oh, mind all the hooks there. I've got fish hooks there. I love it when the dogs go all over your cameras, and food, hooks. They get a hook in the mouth, they'd soon be bloody moaning, wouldn't they? And why people don't put dogs on leads when it says have dogs on leads? Beyond me. And I like dogs. Now yeah, that's about where I had a perch. Whether or not it came out of the film, I don't know. Oh, little fish rose in. Now I've actually got some floating casters. That might, uh, might bring them up a bit. I can't say I can see with polarising glasses, it's so wooded and over, overgrown above me and a cloudy day, which is good for fishing, but I can't see the actual deep runs or anything like that. I want to get over that side more. I think a little bit more ground bait. I mean, the problem with a lot of these, a lot of these places is the otter problem. I'm sorry, it's the otter problem because Look how clear this is here. Chuck a bit of ground bait out there. I want to go over that far side. And they're just decimating everything. It's all real releasing all these bloody otters. But there's less and less and less fish. And in low summer conditions like this, they must think it's Christmas. Going around killing all the fish, eating what they fancy and just leaving the rest. That's a bit of run there. I just fancy the floats going down through here. And I'm leaning, hanging on this tree, but at least the light's better. I might actually get rid of my polarising glasses. 
and um, just use ordinary glasses. So I find it really dark and I can see me getting a thumping headache. And just mind you, the trouble is now I can start to see bits of weed bed and stuff. Not much flow at all, it's creeping through the float. Could be a tough one. I'm guessing the fish are going to be wherever the slightest extra pace is and where that little bit of extra flow is. Fish on guys, fish on. On that, just below that willow root there, not a big fish, look. I had a decent perch just now. This is, he said avoiding the uh, trees. What is that? Is that a dace? It's a dace. So there we go, small dace. Three maggots, the same three maggots had that perch on. Let's get him back. It's gonna creep down here. Got this tree. There's an antique pot or something down there by the look of it. It's probably worth putting it on the antiques roadshow. That's where I want to get. Anywhere there's an overhang deeper water tree roots, I feel I have trouble mending the float here, so I want to hang it there without moving it about there. And that's gonna give me problems if I've got some uh, current on the inside of that's a little bit faster than the far side. Oh, 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 oh. Guys, let's hope this camera battery stands up. Oh, oh, oh. Net, yes, Graham, net. What, this is a better fish. What the hell is a nice day? It doesn't come off. <laughs> Are we gonna save the day? We'll save the morning, save the first half hour. Watch the trees above, kids, if you're watching. Always watch those trees above, don't get carried away. Better to crouch down. Oh, it's a big dace, man, alive, that's a big dace. Wet the net first. Is that a dace? Grayling. <laughs> Three species. There we go, people. I hope you can see that. Adjust the camera. Always got that little black dot on the grayling. Man, I thought it was a big dace to It would have been a big dace too, wouldn't it? And they've got a very hard bony mouth. So I've got trouble getting that hook out. Let me show you, you might squirm everywhere as they do. Squirm, 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 squirm. Hold still for goodness sake. Only want to show people your fin. There we go, guys. Nice little grayling. Well, I've had a perch, a dace, and a grayling in like six or seven casts. So, and that was on red maggot. So I'm just gonna go to which would be my favorite if it was hard fish. And I imagine this is pretty hard fish. What whites, just double whites, rolling them around the hook. Like that. Let's get back in there. And what you're going to see here, double whites. I started with reds. Usually, whites are a sure shot on chalk stream fishing. Once you get the fish feeding. Now you won't see the rod because it's over to the right there. I'm trying to mend the line and hold it back. They're going to be able to see that white much, much easier. There's the float down there. Coming up to the back of a wee bed, could be fishing along the edge of that. Any time now, oh, I missed it. There is actually another tree that looks a deep hole over there, and this is only six inches deeper than the main river. You can see it's all weed up the inside here, but over there, I don't think I can get to it, so I won't be able to get the float across from this side. But that tree there looks a good, good spot. Oh, 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 fourth species on the whale, I feel. One big fat minnow there. White maggots are not doing it for the bigger fish, but they're doing it, whoa, sorry pal, for the minnow. That is one good perch bait. Back you go, your lucky day. Well, I can't think that's bad four species out of the first one I've even walked up to. I'm gonna have a walk up here because I could make a big mistake. I'm not checking other swims because I don't know the stretch. Don't know what it is, half a mile or so. You can see where the people have fished, look, it's where, warning. I can't see through, I can see the bottom, but I can't see where the fish would be. Very silty, there's not much, not much gravel in here. I think it bends all the way up around here somewhere. Ah, a bit more gravel over there. That looks good. It's obviously well fished. With the gravel being clear like that, I'd say, 
swimmers, dog walkers, dogs in the water. <laughs> Gotta love it. And of course, where I come out, if there's any area that opens up a bit, there's going to be more weed growth because this light up here, that's these trees, just show you up there. All this leaf cover up there, it's going to block out the light so you won't get much weed. As I come into an open area, there should be more weed. If there's more weed, there might, might be a few more fish. It looks very chubby along here too. Some tricky old swims. Well, just as I thought, guys, you can see here, look, all opens up. That's the enclosed area, all back in there. Got a silt down in the river there. So as it opens up, you can see, hopefully, a lot more brighter green weed there, stream of weed, looks a little bit faster, possibly harder to fish. We're looking for spots like over there under that tree, a very short run from that, I'll call that like spear blade grass down to there. I don't know. This is not public walk along here with dogs, so I guess the fish aren't going to be too spooked by movement. That's to me a fishy hole over there. Oh, yeah, saw some little dace and stuff there, and I think the back of there. I don't think there's huge fish in what I've heard in this river, but I'm going to fish. Wait a minute, what's that over there? Is that a trout? I don't know, a slightly bigger fish there. I can see him moving now. I'm going to run all the way down there. Well, I'm not going to run him, of course, I'm not going to run. I'm not religious, I'm not going to run. Yeah, let's get, let's get the rods before the dogs eat everything. Got to give them a bit of grub first. Now, this could spook them, or it could get them going. Who knows? I'm not going to squeeze it hard because I want it to break down and just tumble along the bottom. Yeah, there's a lot more current there. More than you'd think. It's whisking it along. That's the thing, so I don't mind taking a decent bit of bait because at the end of the day you just throw it in and it's all gone downstream anyway. This way I've used all my bits of ground bait that are left over from another session hopefully to get stuff on the feed. Follow this with a pinch pinch of maggots and I probably go to reds because the last time with the white wasn't that wildly successful. I thought it would be, but hey, hey ho, you know. Three fresh on a red and one minnow on a white. Sort of tells its own story. Here we go, bunch of maggots, a few freebies. Might be a tad. In fact, I am too deep there now. Just slide that float back down. I want to run through shallow first, so that if I don't have a bite, I don't disturb the fish. If I go too deep on the first run through, just seen a decent fish back there. Um, if I go through too deep, I might strike a weed and it spooks the fish. So I'm trying to go through shallow. A bit concerned about what I saw back there. That looked like a decent, looked chubbier. Don't know if they get chub in here. There we go, here we go. Kill zone, 12 feet. 10 feet. Oh, fish there, fish there, fish there. That's a chub. I've got him. Man alive, I've got him. I've got him on. Oh no, oh, no. he's taking me to the wee bed. That's naughty. Son of a gun. I'm on light. Now I've got to walk down for this one. There he is, come on. Look like a chub. No, no, it's a brownie, I think. I think it's a brown trout. I knew I saw a bigger fish there. I said to you guys, what did I see down the back there? Come on, come on. And we're gonna reach this without extending the net and without, of course, falling in the water, which is something of a speciality to me. There we go, people. Wow. Now these aren't stockfish, boys. These, these are not stockfish. This is a wild avon brownie. I don't know, there'd be somebody out saying, oh, it's escaped from a trout pond somewhere. I got that one down with the minimal number of red dots here and perfect tail as an absolutely mint condition as English as the Spitfire ground trout hoping you're getting this I've only got the small camera today but to me but to me that's what 
fishing is really all about in a, in a river like this. My God, minnows, let's get him back. I'm gonna put him back with the net. A valuable resource that the otters, cormorants and other people have yet not culled. And I didn't bring a rag with me, which is not good news. So that was a trout. Oh, I thought it was a chub. I still thought it looked like a chub. Another fish on, guys. Another fish on. Next trot down. Same spot where the trout was. This is definitely a nice big dace. You're going to see this. I sort of wish I'd been the big camera. I'm going to take a chance to swing him. No, it's not a dace. I thought it was a big dace. That is yet. Hold still. And I went back to red maggots. Can you notice that? I've gone back to red maggots. And there's his dorsal. Everybody loves to see the dorsal of a greyling. Red maggots, a trout, a grayling, I've had a dace. There we go. Back you go, my boy. I've had nothing over there for a few trots. I'm going to rest that. There's a slightly deeper hole there. And I just realised I haven't chucked any, any bait up there. There's a V and a deep pool. I might actually chance and go a bit deeper. It's the sort of place that a bigger grayling would hold up. Let's get that sorted out. Now I've got a risk. Oh, what a cast, I need a medal. Here we go, it's in the kill zone now, I guess. Nothing, nothing. No, oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> got that one right, read that swim. And that's what it's all about, guys. It's not about the tackle, it's not almost about the bait. It's about being able to read the swim and come up with wild brownies like this. My goodness me, what a good little session. Uh, 5 to 11 in the morning, started at 10 o'clock. I'm going straight back in that swim because I feel there might be a decent fish on the edge of that weed. Hopefully you're getting all this. You won't see the float because it's wide angle. Oh, <laughs> what an angler. Anglers and danglers, my God. Two casts. Looks like a day, but in fact, guys, it is a great length. Are we going to do three on three? Let's leave the camera rolling. Can we do it? It's got a bit further upstream, so I don't want to spook, wind down, keep that line tight. There's the sink spot, there's the hot spot. Five, four, three, two, missed. Close, but no cigar. It's a very tiny hole there, guys. Very, very tiny little patch. You'll see how long the float goes before I have to recast. Now again, I've probably spooked the fish there now. We're gonna move on and see what's up there. Hit the swim, fish or two, move. And by the time you come back, they might be rested, they might be forgot about you. We used to do a lot of chub fishing like this. Roving fishing is the way to go on a new water. I don't get to fish. This is a day ticket. This is just a day ticket water. Free stretch and a day ticket, can you believe? No luxury syndicate water, guys. Look. A day ticket. Just a day ticket there. Paid my five pounds. No luxury free invites for me to syndicate waters and all the secret squirrel stuff. Just out there with uh, the ordinary guy in the street doing the best I can. If anybody wants to invite me to a wonderful barbel syndicate stretch where I can catch them on the float, I will gladly come. Come on, fish. The ultimate, this fishing and nailing a barbel on a float. Last cast in this swim. It's the last chance you get, guys. Bit short, bit short, bit short. Probably mending the floats uh, killed that one off. Now just as a try out, I'm going to shallow that float back to the original depth. That swim's had a rest. That ground bait from there will have gone through. There might be a chance of a pickup just over there now. I've no idea. That's that normally just the way I fish. That's a good, what I call a good hang. Could hold the float nicely there then. There's a fish here I feel I was owed. No, let's move. Now see, I was going to take my polarising glasses off in those trees it was so dark, I'm glad I didn't. Because I perhaps wouldn't have been able to see these swims quite so well. Someone stood there. Oh, this bend looks tasty. <laughs> oh my good. Good lord, this looks good. Another side stream over there. Swirly. Mm, nobody likes fishing here guys, look at all this junk on the inside. Nobody likes fishing there. That run over there is absolutely pacey and is screaming fish to me. All right, nobody else fishes here. I certainly am going to risk a float, maybe from here, casting upstream. 
let's give them a bit of food first let them know there's a nice person here feeding them. but look I'm not throwing it up there I'm going to walk all the way up I'm not squeezing it hard just just lobbing it out yeah it's further than it looks Ooh. that's it get a float out because I've gone back to the red and I feel that's a bit deeper there that's a real tricky one to get to but I've gone a little bit deeper hopefully I can keep this oh no got it back boy was that lucky was that lucky look at the way have you got this guys 52 times around the blanket spun oh, I better switch off while I sort this out now, if I can get up there and then pull it back into that swirly stuff I feel this is absolutely a sure shot swim oh, I see weed now perhaps it's not so sure shot that's a good run down there just tease the float off the weed, bait sinking good run there, good run through but nobody at home fish on guys, I knew there had to be one in there I'm banking on this being a decent oh we're onto another species aren't we well 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 no it's a grainy how, how many times have I got that wrong today Nice grading too, nice grading, nice grading, nice grading, nice grading, come on babe, in you come. There we go people. Last cast here guys, and then they move I feel. Six trots, no fish. Is that the bailiff, dressed in black? Disguised. Now it's narrowing down again here more overhang, still plenty of light coming in so plenty of weed it's just finding holes, it's a tiny possible hole over there one's clearing out really is the truth of it maybe one up there, I'm going to give this one a go so there's a the float, my standard old oven float glued together and he's actually throwing the hook in the net luckily stop kicking, why they kick? whaling are so weird creatures aren't they you just don't want to be photographed at all so there he is, nice grayling. I don't know what he is, half a pound, something like half a pound, I say. I feel this one's worth a couple of pinches of maggots. Just by this trim, it's a nightmare to fish, but I think that could be a decent hole for slightly bigger fish. You might live, like, live in there, because if the anglers don't... Look at this, look at this, look, I mean, good lord, look at it, just... I'm panicking, I want to get it in, I've just thrown all my bait in. Oh now the maggots have fallen around the hook. Let's give it a shot anyway. A tad deeper. Just a tad, okay. I get that same honey pot part again, I doubt it. No. Try a second one. Normally the second one goes up the trees, isn't it? That's always the way. No. Third time lucky. It's because I've got the camera on people. Didn't have the camera on, I was fishing really well. There we go, that's the spot. Oh God, I'm near the edge. Nearly near the edge, look at that float. Look at that float, boy. It's going under, there it is. I knew that would go under, that's a deep hole there. That's grayling central down there. I'm using a close face reel here, as you see, and having no problem with it at all. More trouble with the undergrowth hook straight out, fish straight back, boom, in the zone, we all know what it's like float fishermen don't you, can't get out there fast enough, it's your deep Mr Crabtree type pool like this, you think god, give it anything just to run a float down there, lovely pace, edge of the wee bed, overhanging snags and stuff like that, got to be another one in there surely, Oh, perhaps not. <coughs> not quite far enough over. That could be the kitty. That's the money spot. Just under the tree almost. See the extra pace? We won't see it, but there's extra pace on the float there. It's just going... 
and there's the fish. See that extra pace? That made the difference, and it is, as I said, Grayling Central. Not bad for five pound day ticket, is it, guys? Well, I don't even have them on the five pound stretch yet. On again, peeps. Here we go. That's a bit frisky. That's a frisky. That is, yes, Mr. Greedy Trout. You can see how greedy they are. That's why they're protected by fly fishing. Because they have got to be the greediest fish going, these little chappies. One more go at the honey pot. Oh, please send me a medal for that cast. That's got fish written all over it. <laughs> I told you, I did tell you people, it's not about the tackle, it's about the recognition of the swims. And I've never even fished it before. That's three grayling and a brown trout on the trot. On the trot, no trotting actually. Fish out, fish back. Going with the same bait because I know that if I can get in that hole again. No, too short now, see if I'm right. I fear no bite. I may be wrong of course, it has been no. No, not happy. I just wish I could get in there and cut all that rubbish out. That's about right there. Just a slight pick up in the current. Might have been a little far downstream. I don't know though. Might have missed. No, there you go. You can see the difference, look guys. It's absolutely marked that out there, two feet this side, no fish. Two feet further in, fish. And that's all about reading the water. It's nothing to do with my rod and reel at the end. Any rod and reel would probably do this. Look, I can't, but oh God, why did I say that? Any rod and reel will probably do this in the match area. I've got an even, but it's where you put the float is the critical factor. Are we gonna do this on the bounce again? No. Well, I've had about 25 grayling now, done really well. I just walked up here, right with the main road, unfortunately, but a classic stretch. You can just see this behind me. It's a deep, steady pace, which tells me it should be dace, should be grayling, but there might be an outside chance of a roach. I might have to go back to the car, because this is the only stretch I've found that I might be able to run a center pin reel down, which is just a different way of fishing, that's all. It's no more efficient than the way I've got here, but it's such nook and cranny fishing further down. This is, yes, yeah, a nice long run, look here that I could probably come up to here somewhere about here not fall in ground don't go in start there run all the way down there with that float I'm going to probably have some lunch there's another one over there and I've got a feeling it opens out totally up there and then fingers crossed I'm going to show you a few more fish I haven't shown them all because they get a bit samey don't they but I've had a really good uh, session Consider I've never fished it before and I'm just looking for holes good job I left the old glasses on wouldn't it but I'm going to just run down here, see if I can get one for you. And then I'll fill lunch, re-rig, put a centre pin, re maybe a centre pin and my match rod. Now the other thing I've done, I don't know if anybody really fishes here. Well, I may have read this swim. I'm assuming that I'm reading it correctly. What I've done, guys, is get the old mags out. I've mashed up some bread there and I've put those floating casters in. If I throw the floating casters in loose, they just drift away on the top. But if I throw them in and I've crushed them, they'll gradually rise up and that looked like maybe like an insect rising off the bottom don't forget this is prime chalk stream so they're going to be used to taking insects that start at the bottom and rise to the surface I feel this is a a chance here I'm even going to give them some of these expensive maggots I went for the adult portion I didn't actually go for the child's portion this time I lashed out and spent three pounds let's have a run through might take a while for him to find that bit of bait. Not sure on the depth. What a shame that road's going past. Why can't they reroute it? It's a lovely spot of, uh, of river. I can't see me spending five minutes here and not getting a fish. I just can't see it because that's a nice pace. Very, very roachy looking. 
I think I'm in the zone now because that's about where that ground boat will be will be sinking and running down the bottom so the bottom end of the swim I feel is possibly a little bit better but I might need to go a bit deeper the floats going through it's not being bothered by weed or fish I've just seen one dimple way back there that's probably taking one of those floating casters off the top I'll have three or four casts here before I have lunch I'll definitely come back and try it with the centre pin trouble is it looks good all the way up this river when you don't know a fishery everywhere looks good it's only the locals that know which are good and which are a waste of time I had about three or four runs down before I found them here he comes, here he comes, what is it? it is another grayling folks time to go and have some lunch and I feel, come here calm down Mr Mannery get a centre pin give it a go back you go but one more cast I haven't tried that far side yet well I've come up to the top end by the uh, by the main road so it's going to be noisy but there's a bridge here okay well obviously there's a bridge here Graham it's the end of the fishery but what there is there when there's a bridge generally there is no weed because the light can't get in there I've just gone to have a look up here and there's a really big trout there I mean a big one I thought at first it was a chub but it's not now you guys are going to see because you've got polarizing lenses I'm wondering it's probably going to spook but if just if he's still in the same position I might have spooked him when I came up I think he's moved he was just up here maybe a trickle of maggots in here just might might get him feeding I'm gonna have a good old look through here well pretty black but it's worth a shot obviously it's a center of artists here as well as you can see maybe you can see that guys if you've got a can of spray paint and nothing else left to do in life this is the place for you I think it's scoffing the maggots guys and uh, I don't know how I'm going to get this rod without spooking him but there's something let's get that let's get myself organized here a bit put the net there I can see hardly anything it's the barest minimum of shape but there is definitely something down there scoffing maggots what the heck is that there wow he's going around eating them I see him don't want to spook him there's hardly any flow okay okay see the fish see the fish oh my god no he's turned away he's not stupid oh there's lots of little ones I don't need the little ones I don't need the little ones here he comes again oh, I don't really want to move I don't know if he's seen it or not oh, how am I going to move the float Jesus Christ it looks like a barbell okay I'm on the money now I'm on the money he's looking at it, he's underneath it and he's left it alone well that's not very nice is it oh, got him on, got him on, got him on oh my god it's a big fish, it's a big 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 fish it's a big fish oh please don't ping off, nobody will believe me I can't afford to let him go too far, look at the size of this trout it's a huge trout. Got compared with the Grayley. Oh my god. Ah, bit of a problem here, guys. I'm okay for weed. Lovely trout, lovely trout. What? How am I gonna get him out? I'm gonna have to try and walk him down. Hopefully the Oh, this is a good one. I'm gonna have to walk him down and get him into the light for you. Now I'm gonna run the risk of the weed. Do I net him? Oh, I can't reach him. Jesus, he's seen the weed. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop that. Stop that business. Just try. Come on, come on, come on, baby. I don't know if you can see it. Get in there, get in there. Oh, no, he's out. Shit. Sorry, pardon the French. Ah! Oh. 
<gasps> Look at the size of this trout. Oh my god. That's a proper fish, guys. Look at that one. Yes, indeedy. I thought I saw him munching my maggots. I put white ones on so he could see it. There he is. Oh, what a crack of fish. Look at that, people. That is, I'm going to put that down as an escapee, maybe, from a trout farm. What do you think? <laughs> right. I'm sorry, but after all that fishing, I feel I should be the star of the show, not the fish. Wow, all before lunch. What a good job I walked up the top end. Oh, hold still, buddy. You're going straight back in the water. Feast your eyes on that. Was that not worth a fiver of a day ticket? Beautiful fish. <laughs> Caught by sheer skill. No, eyesight. The polarizing lens. Let's get him back. Hold still, bud. Going back in a second. I'll try and get you people of it so you can see it in the water. That is. That is a lovely fish, look at that. Let's get him back in. I bet you thought nobody was going to catch you today. <coughs> and you met somebody you did. Let's let him recover there a second. He's upside down. Watch the trout get out the right way. There we go, look at that. He's turning, he's turning, he's turning. He's going to rest there. Oh yeah, sweet picture. Why did I not bring the big camera? There he is guys, just resting in the current there. Getting his strength back, getting a good scrap on that Avon rod. We need more of a scrap if I got him on the uh, match rod and a centre pin. He is absolutely fine, just going to leave him to rest there. If I touch him with my Landing it hand in a couple of minutes, it'll shoot off. Oh God. I've got to go and see if there's any more in there. I won't be fishing off the road bridge, that's for sure. Not unless I'm going to get run over. You can see all the stream of weed there, guys. It's a real shame with fisheries nowadays, they just don't cut channels through that so you can fish. Not just this river, a lot of rivers, they don't just get managed like they should do, like they did years ago when I was younger. Just one or two people that do it in clubs and that now and uh, try and drum up support. All these club secretary members and things, they know it's tough getting members to come out and do jobs, but it's for your own benefit. No one's going to do it for you. Believe me, if I owned this stretch, I would be in there with a digger or something, clearing it out, cutting all these trees back, keeping it scenic, but making sure it's still very fishable. Where's our man? I'm going to move him now with the pole. Cool, didn't need to. Didn't need to, gone. Straight over and hiding under those weed beds. Oh, man, that was worth, that was worth five pounds. Oh, it's hard to believe. Oh, I see other fish down where that big one's replaced it. And look at this puff of mud, you won't see it. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can. Actually, you know what? You guys can see more than I can. There's fish moving over there. And there's a puff of sand just going down there. So presumably there's a fish spooked here. I better have another look along here. Hmm. I feel it's worth throwing a bit more bait in there. Maybe some bread just resting on the bottom and look at it when I've, when I've had my lunch. I think lunch has got to be put on hold, guys. I see some little half pound grayling or dace. Threw that bread in, just think I'll come back after lunch. But unfortunately for me, I've seen another big trout. Do you know what he's doing? Scoffing my bread. <sighs> you might be able to help him out with his dinner there. I'm nearly out, nearly out of camera battery, but oh there, can't get over there very far. This is going to be almost impossible to cast, strike, or whatever. There are fish all over down here, but there's one big old trout that I'm sort of I'm angry for he puffs of mud. Oh, there he is. Gee whiz, I think he's bigger than the other one.
Holy cow, guys. This is a salmon. This is a salmon sized trout. Where is he? I do not want the little ones. I think I got him. I think he's coming for it. Oh, you monkey turned away. Okay. I'm going to have to play it that way. I'm going to isolate the float and send it further over. I bet the camera battery goes out. He's swinging around so fast, he's not lying on station, you see. Oh no, little ones. Oh, he might have seen me. No, he's chasing all the little ones away. Turning, 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 turning. Oh, he turned off it. Oh, he is a big one. He's a cutie. I may be a tad deep, but I don't want to put the float so shallow that it spooks him. And I definitely don't want to hook one of those small fish. That's a nice fish, that's a nice fish. He won't come in closer. Okay. I've had him on once. Oh no, a small one's taken. No, 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 go away. Okay, he's going for it. Got him, guys, got him on, got him on, got him on. Got him on, big, big brown, bigger than the other one. Huge big brown. Oh my God. I don't know if you're gonna get any of this. It is a big, big A, double A, big ass brown trout. Rod's buckled round. You probably won't see him. He is a really big fish. Look at this one. He's taking me up under the bridge. Guys, you've got to be quick. The battery's gone. Or the chip for one or the other. Something bizarre's happened. It just, it just broke down on me. Even bigger. Big, big brownie. Look at this one, people. It's even bigger. Definitely must be escapees from a, a fish farm or something. I'll put this guy. I've thrown some more bread in. Right by the weed. More fish will keep coming. I'm never going to eat my lunch at this rate. I've got to try and catch another one. There's freaking drought everywhere, guys. I don't understand it. I know it's a chalk stream and all that. There's another, there's another one down the back. I'm just about, here he comes. Watch the float, Graham, watch the float. Got him on, boys, got him on. Third brown. Oh my God. What is going on with this place? They're just on the edge of that weed there. Oh, see if I'm giving the sunshine for you. The last one the camera went down on. And I didn't get a chance to, to get him in the light for you. He's in the weed. Oh, sweet nothing. I love it. Is he going to bury or am I going to get him? Guys, another nice fish. It's another nice fish. Scoop, 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 scoops. Come on, babe. Come on, get in there. Oh, 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 look at this. I hope there's enough memory card on the camera. OMG. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Scoffed it. Look, just scoffed it. Get the hook out. Got quite a lot of teeth on him. Just. Now, I think we're going to check. There's three dots on that apercular on his gill cover. I'm going to check and look. You guys do the same and see if that first brown has exactly the same three dots there. That cannot be the same fish I caught that, that quickly. Even I would be staggered at that. That's beyond belief. Let's get this kitty back. What I could do? Same snipped off fins. It cannot be the same fish. It can't be. Get you swam away. So I'll go and catch him again. It can't be right. How many more on the edge of this weed here? On again. This might be a wild one. He's buried in the weed. Smaller fish. He's got me in the weed at the moment. I've got him out. Let's have a look. Let's take a walk him down. Walk him on the same route. This one, I'd say, why he's going crazy is a proper wildy. He's in. I may be wrong. Man alive, what a session. So there he is, guys. That, fin's perfect, is a little wild one. Let's get him back. Nice to catch the wild ones. Look, I like catching big fish, of course I do. Nice to catch the wild ones, though. 
gone. There he goes. Back to the wee beds. I think I've had the best of this. It's time to have something to eat myself. Well guys, I don't think I'm going to top what efficient I've had up there. So I've come back, I've had something to eat. I've had something to drink because I've been like four hours without anything to eat or drink. I got so in the zone, unbelievable. I've come up and I've got my centre pin, taking the other uh, reel off, close face one. I'm not going to catch more with the centre pin, I'm just going to try and hopefully show you a different way of fishing. Uh, one pool I haven't done is here, which is right by the car park, right by another bridge, another bridge. Um, I'm going to throw some ground bait in there, it's much, much slower, and just see if I can't get something on the centre pin for you. It's a big sunken piece of weed over there, might be something underneath that. And I've mixed a little bit more ground bait there with those floating casters. Nothing much really come up, I must admit I'm surprised. Middle of the summer, you know, you think there'd be fish moving. Maybe it's in the evening. Anyway, they're going to get a little bit of a feed. I'm only going to give it like 30 minutes. I've got jobs to do at home. I feel could be a fish over there. What colour? Red or white? Smith, you at the back. Red or white? Smith wants red. Okay. Now, guys, I can't fish properly with a centre pin with this mic and umbilical cord, so I'm just going to shut this down and lay it there. There it is guys, small trout, first trot through on the centre pin. I wasn't even where I wanted to get the float. Here we go, another fish on, got a feeling, it's not a grayling. Oh my god, oh my god, another species, another species. A little bit slower there, current's a little bit slower, and what do we come up with? Mike will be pleased to see this one, hold still guys. Yes, a perch. Yet another species from this one river. I'll tell you what, for sort of half day's fishing, I've done pretty well, I figure. Not a big fish, but on the centre pin, pleasurable. I thought it might be a bit dark in there because I'm not sure with this small camera what I'm getting. So I've come back to this corner and I'm wondering if I can wiggle one last fish out for you. I'm going to try this swim. Not the easiest one to fish, especially with a centre pin. Let's just see if I can get one out for you. I've got to take the line guard off of this, it's driving me nuts. So what you do is you pull a length of line off and then you've got to accelerate it out. It's much, much easier to do with a heavy float and bigger tackle. Just your whole of your end gear being much, much thicker. Big baits. That's better. Big baits carry the line out easier. Yeah, that's quite a short run this. Let's get one more. That's a better one. This is an ideal chub swim, but obviously nobody at home. I think gonna move on. The thing is, people, oh, straight up the trees, you see that? The thing is, people, it's just to keep moving and moving, not to hammer a swim. If you get these little streams and rivers and small areas of just what I call pocket fishing, make sure that you don't hammer it. Otherwise, you're just gonna be feeding bait in there and catching nothing. Now, this is the guarantee. This is uh, Grayling City this morning on the other reel. I've rested this for one and a half hours. I've got to get home soon. Definitely got jobs to do. Wow, this is a tight swim. Just give it one go, eh? If I tilt that out like... If I tilt it out like that, you'll see what looks like a classic barbel and chub swim. But I'm too far upstream for barbel and chub. This is all 
day scrayling trout and perch as I call see if I can get one float to get in there it's very very tricky this is a falling in the water job shortly guys that are probably going to come up with a center pin is you cannot feather it if you go to overcast so you've got to judge how much line you've got on the reel with how far you've got to get so now I've got my distance if I don't get a bite on the way through here now I should have a length of line that will hopefully get me across a little bit tighter and I'm just taking what they call a couple of fingers of line there it's not easy it's not easy to accelerate it that might be on the money that might be close we'll find out within the next five seconds I'd say four three two one bite there's the bite I missed it little dip missed them again that could be minnows when you get a sharp pull down like that it's generally I think minnows there's every chance I'm going in here boys every chance that's a good run through that's a good one that looks like grayling now it's later in the afternoon don't forget fish on fish on now, get him out quick Turn that click off, we don't want that. I'm in the weed, I'm in the weed, I'm in the weed. And there we go, peeps. That is, I mean, listen, I must have had 30. It's just another graily. But it shows you, center pin does work, should you so want to use it. I personally think in conditions like this, where it's very, very tight casting, and what I call pocket casting, you're better off just using a closed face or even what we call just a regular spinning reel, you know? Because you have to have enough float and you have to have, have enough weight on that float to flick it right up the tree like that, you son of a... I got it back, I got it back, I got it in the face. Oh, even better. Oh, it's in my nose. Now it's in the bush. Gotta love it, haven't you? Okay, now this is a classic centre pin trotting stretch along here. It's nice and even, constant flow, constant depth. I'm just going to start right at the top of the swim, get rid of the last of my bait because I've got to get back now. And at least I might be able to pick one fish off traditional centre pin fishing for you. Right, throwing a load of bait in there, guys. Managed to get the float tangled up. Let's unspin it. The thing is, this is only a 2BB float. It's not really ideal for centre pin fishing, I find, me personally. So you've got the reel like this. If you can see that and it's got a tensioning nut here you screw it in and it pressures on this center axis here this pen point that pin and that obviously slows it down or you unscrew it if you want it to go like this look barely touch it and it runs out I personally hate line guards I think a lot of guys do so I'm just gonna drop it out there now the current when the current if it was a heavier float picks that weight of that float up the current should almost, well not should almost, it will pull it. But it's low summer conditions, it's very, very slow. There's not enough to pull it, but this is what should be happening. There we go, look, there we go. In fact, if I stick it, if you can see that, if I stick it to the surface of the river, you can see there's just barely enough flow, and I've got constant contact with the flow all the way down. You can hold it back, you can stop it, you cannot obviously speed it up. But that is nearly got enough line and weight in the water to run down under its own steam. In other words, the, the pull of the current, look, the float's not heavy enough here, but that's the principle of it. And then when you do get a bite, you just lock your thumb on and then strike. You can either do it with your thumb like this. Hopefully you can see this. Let's do it close. You can either do this. If you're altering, you, know, you can feed it, you can adjust it, you can, you can drop it back, you can push it forward, or you can regularly wind, which is when you're fighting a fish, or if you don't have the line guard, which is a pain, you can bat it, what they call batting here, like, like this. And obviously that whizzes the line in. For casting, you take what's called a finger or two of line. So you pull off, let's say, a yard of line, which is ideal for here. I swing it out, drop it down, 
shake off the loose and I'm actually away and fishing there. I can follow it down. If I want to go further downstream, or is it farther? I never know if it's further or farther. I've got what they call a finger of line there so I can take off a finger of line from there or a finger of line from here. That's two fingers of line. Look, I've got two fingers of line. So I put a bit more off the reel. I flick it. But if you did notice, I let one finger go before the other so they don't tangle. I'll just do that one again for you. Get two fingers of line like this. Hopefully you can see it. And I've got one at the top, one at the bottom, if you can imagine this. I'm going to swing it like this. Just obviously I'm going nowhere with it. Right finger, left finger, and it runs out straight. So two, you don't have to have two fingers, it can be just here. But generally, two fingers are lying there. And as some guys are really good at it, they flick it, and at the last minute, they just get that going and get a few extra feet out of the cast. I feel that was as close as I get to good for me. I may even get a fish out of this rundown, and you can let it trot all the way down. I can't show you the float going through the swim, because I don't have the big camera. This is a fixed lens camera, because I didn't want to lug loads around today. So to finish off people, you're going to do some float fishing on a river. If it's new to you, I strongly suggest traveling light. I just use this belt pouch. I've even felt tip some of the name out. Don't do me any favors, it wasn't free. They're not getting any, any snippets. A lot of people do that now. They felt tip out all the names on the brands. Pull your gear you want in there, that keeps you mobile. I just take a bucket with my ground bait and my uh, hook bait in it so you can travel light with that as well. And then if you want to try different swims, you can hit 10 or 20 swims in a day. Rest that swim, here's the tips coming now. Don't pound the swims to death. Just rest the swim after you've had one or two fish out of it. Five, six, seven trots through is nothing. Maybe try a little bit more feed. Don't overcook the feed, it will put them off. It's a small area and you'll frighten them. Move on. Another thing, closed face reels are generally better for float fishing because the diameter of the spool itself is bigger than what we call a fixed spool or a spin reel. Therefore it will come off easier and you can control it with your finger better. Youngsters, it's jungle reel here for you. I can imagine the local tackle shops would love you coming down here losing all your gear. Listen, if you do strike, try not to strike upwards into the trees. Just slow everything down and a little pop of the wrist sideways if your float's going downstream you want to strike low think where your rod's going to end up like if i'm here look let's move this if i'm here i'm not going to go oh strike snap you know so sort of look behind you give yourself some space think well I'm, I'm not going to touch that bam you strike there all these small tips they'll help you catch fish look for what we call pockets very slightly deeper areas of water on the river I've never been here before in my life. I've had a blinder. I've done really good with polarizing glasses. I'll probably have a thumping headache, but that's the way it is. So, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm taking my bucket and spade and tackle. Off back home, do some work. Keep watching, look out for Mike's channel, the Totally Awesome Outdoors channel. And don't forget, download your free copy of the Awesome Angler. In my case, it's the Awesome Dangler. See you again.